Hey guys, today I am here, I'm back after an intense weekend. Finally getting this out of the way, the Kat Von D Saint and Center palette. I have been saying that I've been gonna do this for like a month or two. To be honest, every roadblock that could have gotten in the way of this video has. Every time I would sit down to film this video, something would come up. Either I would have to leave and go, you know, rush pick up my niece from school, which was unexpected, or I got super sick the last time I was filming. I mean, I have been so sick for the last few days, you guys, you don't even understand. I had the stomach flu. I don't know if you've ever had it, but like, people are always like, mm, I think I have food poisoning or stomach flu. You don't, there is no I think. You will be dying. I didn't eat from Sunday till last night, which was Tuesday. I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't keep even a sip of water down. I'm fine today. It's gone. Thank the Lord. Last night I ate soup and it was like a beast awoke in me. It was like hunger I'd never experienced before. And I ate two bowls of soup and two hunks of bread. <laughs> what happened to keto? I don't know. It does not exist when you are sick. Oh, the day is here. I feel so much better today. Not perfect, but way better. So I am here to film Kat Von D Saint and Center. Another reason this palette has been long put off on my YouTube channel is because this palette intimidates the shit out of me. I feel like I wouldn't consider myself a novice when it comes to an eyeshadow, but for this palette, I find that there's just something about it that it just freaks me out, man. It's too jumbled, it's too all over the place, and there are too many colors to choose from. And that is an unbelievable statement coming from somebody who generally really loves eyeshadow. But I feel like this is an important point to note that if you are somebody that's a beginner with makeup, this may intimidate you. So I'm gonna get into all the nitty gritty, all the information about this palette. I know this is an, old, an older palette, but from what I understand, this is limited edition. So if you are gonna get it, you may wanna get it like now because it's probably gonna go away soon. I don't even know. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not yet. I put up new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, unless I am sick and I miss a Monday. It was pretty bad. I was like dying. Um, and I had a cluster headache for five straight days. Five. Also make sure you guys follow me on all my other social media stuff to stay up to date. Everything is Raw Beauty Christy. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, Snapchat. I update those if I'm not gonna put up a video, if I have a question or if I have a poll or if I need to know anything, Twitter, Snapchat. Those are the two main ones. So this is the Kat Von D Saint and Center Palette unit carton and wow it's beautiful if you guys did not know Kat Von D designed all the artwork herself for this obviously she is a tattoo artist and an incredible artist in and of herself and she designs all of her own packaging artwork labeling etc and I really really love this packaging I do think that it is beautifully done pretty cool design on the back of the package it has all of the eyeshadow names and colors this we're gonna get into, we're gonna talk all about this. Oh dearie, are we going to ever. You take out the palette and this is what it looks like here. You open it up and you have your saint side and your sinner side. Now, as you can tell, she chose all these colors to be more of the soft, ethereal. These are more of the bold, intense, and obviously saint and sinner. Not much more I need to explain. The names are all as well chosen to fit the side. So on this side, you've got worship, immaculate, amen, etc. This side, you've got devil, <laughs> Sabbath, and um, exorcism. So, you know, fun stuff. I have a, a zero idea what I want to do with this, but um, we're going to have some fun or maybe not so much fun. We're going to, you know, we'll see. I'm gonna give you some information on the palette itself and then I'm gonna go through and give you my opinions on it before we get into the So the Saint and Sinner palette is $62 and in here you get 24 eyeshadows. That breaks down to about $2.58 per eyeshadow, which is a higher end price, Sephora pricing if you guys did not know. Uh, for comparison, like VH Cosmetics eyeshadows are like 68 cents per pan. Anastasia Beverly Hills, $3 per pan in a palette. So it's relatively average pricing for Sephora. This is sold at Sephora and on KatVonDBeauty.com. Obviously this is done in a cathedral design, which I think is super cool. And obviously it's based on Catholicism because as you couldn't tell, cathedral, worship, immaculate, you know, you know how it goes. Kat Von D is a cruelty-free brand. She is, I would definitely consider a vegan activist and this palette is vegan, although not all of her products are, but I believe their brand is gearing more towards that completely in the future. But yes, they are a completely cruelty-free brand. The two eyeshadows at the very top of this palette, Absolution and Rapture, are part of their new Glimmer finish. 
and I have never tried that one personally myself. If you guys don't know that, she came out with a uh, Shade and Light Glimmer palette. I put that in Anti Hell actually, because to me, I was like, uh that couldn't be further from something I could be interested in. Which I believe they're like an eyeshadow topper. They're not so much an eyeshadow that you would like expect full pigmentation out of, but they're more of like a shimmery glimmer. I mean, come on. For the other shades, there are Electrifying Metallics. This is from the website. Velvety Mattes and Shimmering Pearls. And then you've got the two glimmer shades at the top. So you definitely have an array of different types and styles and shadows. Now, that's pretty much all the information that I need to give you for this palette. Each pan is one gram, just so you guys know. It's, it's average or a little bit more than average for an eyeshadow pan, so not bad. My beef with this palette is a few different things, and I, I honestly, I bought this because you guys wanted me to review it. Not so much that it automatically draws me in, and there are a few things that don't draw me in, and you guys probably agree with me on this. Some of you won't, but some of you, well, fine, the majority of you will. The layout of this palette is so strange to me. I understand why they do it this way, but I hate it when brands do this. I wish they would just stop. The way colors are done, and from what I understand, the way they lay out these palettes has a rhyme and a reason. So, like these three colors would go together here. These, these, they put them in color stories and and they put them in complementary colors, etc. Like, I would agree, these three shades totally go together. There have been many people online that have depotted this and they, they re-lay out the shadows, and I'm gonna put a picture of that in here. I did not do this, this was somebody else. Somebody sent this to me on Twitter, but I believe this was picked up from Reddit. This, to me, looks approximately 150,000 times better than this palette here. I'm more inspired by it, it makes more sense to me. I can see the colors and the finishes and the layout way better. To me, this is a jumble mess. I don't know where to start, I don't know what colors are gonna be good transition shades, I don't know what colors go well together, I don't know what I look to create create with this. This to me is so haphazard. I, I get it and I know why they do it, but that's just my initial thought and I just feel like for me, I, I would completely reorganize this palette. And I get that the colors are put in by Saint and Sinner's side. I know that she created shades for one side and shades for the other, so she wants them to be separate where the separate doors close and although that covers it, so that's fucking weird. I get it, but I hate it. What I want is all of the electric colors to be on one side and all of the neutrals to be on the other. Or I want it to start from the lightest shade here and work its way down in a rainbow pattern. I want maybe the neutrals to stop here and then it to go rainbow left to right. I think that would be so much more eye-pleasing and it would make more sense to me. Where I do understand the point of this, I don't like it. It intimidates me and it makes me feel like I don't even know where to freaking start, man. I am making a big deal out of eyeshadows and I really need to calm down. So traditionally when I do these videos, I do my swatches, i.e. Stephanie Nicole style. If you don't know who she is, you need to. She does some really great swatches. She does a finger swatch and a brush swatch and then cleans her brush off with the Vera Mona color switch in between. I normally do those swatches, but lately I've been kind of wanting to veer away from that. Not because it's not a good way to do it. I think it's the best. Number one, it takes a fucking long time. Two, I don't know if it's all that necessary because I do feel and I'm gonna I'm, I'm beating a dead horse at this point and I'm gonna be a broken record But you really swatches are more to see the color on my skin not really the performance of the eyeshadow So to use a brush for me It's almost like an extra step because I'm not gonna know how this performs until I put it on my eyes like the subculture palette swatched awesome <laughs> and it was, it's a trash palette. So I think that I'm going to swatch this just with my finger on my arm. I'm gonna do the Saint side first, center side second. Absolution. Worship. Immaculate. Chalice. Sacred Heart. Amen. Sanctuary, Heaven, Crucifix, Cathedral, Rosary, and Baptism. Back it up a little bit so you guys can see them all together. I mean, they're okay. Do any of them inspire me to like want to die a little bit? Mm. This is the Saint side. Rapture, Sabbath, Ashes. That is so disappointing. It looks so black in the palette. Martyr, Devil, 
Revelation. Vestment, Ministry, and Exodus. Exorcism, Relic, and Stigmata. That is the Sinner side. This side really, of the two, this is the one that inspires me. I, I'd say, I'd say with the two sides, you definitely have an array of eye looks you can create. That is for damn sure. Yay, swatches are done. My least favorite part. But I do think the colors are really pretty, but I don't think they swatched well at all. So I'm hoping they blend well on my eyes. Other than that, I, I literally don't know what I want to do with this palette. Oh. I'm going to go do the brows and prime my lids and I will be back and we are going to do an eyeshadow look with this. I hope. Do my brows match? No. Um, do I care? Also, no. <laughs> so I think to start off, I'm gonna go in with a base shade and I'm going to put down Amen right here. Wow, for a light shade that has a lot of pigment, normally light shades like this can be pretty chalky, but and as you can see, that really lightened up my eyelid quite a bit. So for the matte shades, as you guys can tell from this palette, there are not very many. So we've got the color Martyr here and Devil, and then Amen and Baptism and the black. And that's kind of it. You're stuck with all shimmers. So really my only option to go through with a transition shade is gonna be Martyr here. I find that they're blending out quite easily, not having any issues. Yeah, they're blending quite nicely so far, the color Martyr at least. So I'm gonna take my Smith 230 brush, which looks really dirty, but it's it's actually not. I just cleaned it off. And the color Crucifix right here. I'm gonna dip into that. Oh, quite a bit of pigment. I'm deepening up the crease with that. Oh, that looks, that's blending nicely. So I'm gonna take some concealer and a flat brush and I'm going to cut out my crease so that this looks a lot more clean. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with Relic, go in with some Fix Plus on my brush so that it n glides nice and paint-like over my eyes. I'm not taking it all the way out because I want to go into that revelation color on the outer portion of the eye and I think I'm going to pat that on and then do a wing so that it kind of like gradiates. So the color wasn't all that intense so I'm just taking some of that shade on my finger because you can see the intensity really bumps up and I'm just patting it over the bottom. I'm not going all the way up to the crease because it's too difficult to get in that area but it just intensifies the gold on my actual lid. We're gonna see how this works, but I'm gonna take the color Revelation, which is this really interesting, it looks like a shimmer in the pan, but when you see it in person, I'm telling you, it's like a matte, it's, it, it, it's interesting, it's like a matte shade with glitter. Okay, so do you see how it clung on to where the shimmer shade was, but it won't stick to my skin there. All right, well, we are in a little bit of a pickle. So I just took some Sabbath and I blended it into the outer corner here and kind of winged it out. And then I'm gonna put a real black wing over the top of this so that it kind of ties in. And then I took some of this shade here, Chalice, and I patted it over the center of both just to kind of bring them together. 
I feel like I'm gonna take a little concealer and I'm gonna run it in between the two so there's like a negative space so that it makes it look nice and clean. Now that I've cut out that area with concealer, I'm gonna go into the Saint and Sinner palette and I'm gonna take the color right here called Amen and I'm going to pat that over the concealer to really lighten it up. I am going to do the same thing to the other eye, toss on black winged liner and I will have my lashes on as well and I will be right back to finish the rest of my eyes. Okay, so I am back and um, I'm gonna finish off my eyes. I think they look like trash, but you know what? Trash ass eye looks are what I live for lately, apparently. I think I'm honestly just gonna run a little bit of that martyr color underneath my eye. I'm gonna take a brush and dip into the color Amen and mix it with the color Baptism, which are the two lightest shades in there. I'm just going to pop those on my inner corner, how low that is bright. These have a lot of pigmentation for matte shades, damn. All right, this is the eye look I was able to create with the Saint and Center palette. First try, obviously, I, I don't love it. I, now that it's all done, the makeup's completely done, I don't hate it or anything. Um, it's definitely not one of the best eye looks I've ever done, and I'm gonna give you a couple of different things with this palette. So, after actually using it, and not just my first impression on the palette without using it, I completely agree with my initial thoughts on that. The layout gives me no, in inclination of where the hell to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know what colors to mix together. I feel like it's just this jumble fuck of colors that I can't get behind. I know that that's not that big of a deal to some people, but if you are new to makeup, this palette may confuse you. Devil, I'll use that as an example. It's such a regular orange shade that doesn't have the wearability of like, more of a cranberry mix with orange, let's say. Or you see how this orange shade right here it doesn't have many complementary shades. Like, yeah, you could use these three right here. Anything other than that, you're kind of stunted. I feel like the matte shades in here are super limiting. Now, everyone has matte shades in their collection if you are a makeup collector. But if you're not, and you were just looking to get one eyeshadow palette, this won't do everything that you need it to do, in my opinion. I just feel like the shades in here are more additions to an eyeshadow collection than they are being able to use this as one palette that you could go to over and over again. If we wanna talk about a palette that Kat Von D did and I think that she did really well was the Mi Vida Loca Remix palette, which I will show you here. I do have that palette downstairs. I do find though that with these, they are, they're huge. They're huge palettes. Mi Vida Loca Remix being the largest palette that I own in and of itself is probably like this big. It is nice and comfortable. I love that it's made of this cardboard packaging. It's got the magnetic closure. I think it's beautifully done. I, I just think that it could have been better thought out. Now, this is my first time trying it. I will try it again. I will let you guys know that the, the shades blended just fine. So blendability wise, I would say this is a nice palette. If you are immediately drawn to this, I would say that the, sh the shadows are nice and they blend well and they, they're they fine. But if you're looking for a palette that, that you feel like, like, do I need this? If you already have another palette with colors like similar, I would say, no, you don't need this palette. Would I ever reach for this? No, I, I really wouldn't. Just me personally, maybe it's because I have so many eyeshadows and because I, I already have a lot of similar colors to these, this to me is, I just, I don't know, there's something about it I don't love. Now there are really beautiful colors in here, but even so, like this gold shade, like I have Trophy Wife from Fenty, or I have the million gold pigments I have downstairs, or really any gold eyeshadow would work like this. It's, it's not like this one has anything over the top of any of those. Really soft, really blendable, I feel like it worked really well, but that's kind of where the line ends for me. These colors aren't anything that I would write home about being like the most incredible, most amazing pigmented colors in the world. Like this blue looks incredibly vibrant and amazing. Like right here, when you see that with the light shining on it, this looks amazing on camera. In person, 
such a collector's piece. And if you're really into Kat Von D makeup and if you love to collect makeup, I think this is a beautiful piece to have in the collection for $62. It is quite a hefty price tag, but you do get quite a few shades in there. So if you are really into the more interesting toned eyeshadows, or if you're really into vibrant shades, or you really just love collecting Kat Von D makeup, I'd say go for it. It's not a bad eyeshadow palette by any means from what I've tried at it so far. Is it gonna change your life? I don't think so. The black in this palette is super disappointing. Looks maybe fine here, but I have a I have at least 10 black eyeshadows downstairs that perform way better than these. The noir shade from Anastasia Beverly Hills is so much better and blacker. It's amazing. I think I even have it here in front of me. I'll try to swatch it. So I'm gonna swipe my finger in it a few times and build up the pigment. So that is Kat Von D. That is ABH, and I don't know, yeah, you can totally tell. It's not black, like it looks like it's going to be, and it's called Sabbath, so you would expect it to be. That is a pitch black eyeshadow. I mean, it just goes on so pigmented, and it it really retains its black. This one, it just, it, it's very lackluster, and it comes off a lot more of a basic gray then it does come off that really deep pitch black color. So for me, I'd say I'm like 50-50 on this. I don't really know where I stand and I think I would need to use it more or come up with some better eye looks. I had a different style and shape of eye look in mind, but I'm actually saving that for the Kathleen Lights palette that I'm gonna do. So she came out with a collaboration with ColourPop and that is gonna be coming up soon. So I think probably next week I'm gonna be doing maybe a collab. Yeah, I said, I'm 50-50 on this. You guys can see, if you look at this and you're somebody and you go, hey, I love the colors in that palette, I would say to get it because it is good. The shadow qualities are nice. I would say though, if you look at this and you're like, feel a little confused by it, I'd say skip it. I'd say that there are better palettes out there that that make more sense in their layout and in their color scheme in general that I feel like would probably suit you better. You know, if you just don't quite know what to do, I'd say this one is, uh, I'd say skip skip on this one. I, I, I do think it's pretty and I think it's a nice palette, but I think that you can find better value, especially if you're relatively new. But again, if you're a makeup collector, I mean, shit, this is gorgeous, like a gorgeous palette that's gonna sit there and probably not get as much use as it could if the layout were a little bit better or the color choices were a little bit more cohesive. I don't know. All right, well, that's kind of my view on this palette. I know that this video took a while to get out and oh man, it I, I, I struggled, but it's over, it's done, yay. Okay guys, well, also a few things. I wanted to give you guys a couple of little announcements that I will be having a few giveaways going on this month and I'm so excited about them. So make sure you guys subscribe, make sure you follow me on all my other social media stuff because when those giveaways go live, they're not gonna be live for all that long. I've got a couple of brands working with me on them and you guys are gonna want to get in on these. I'm very excited. So one will be held on my Instagram and the other one I'll probably do here on YouTube. So make sure you guys are following and I probably won't do separate giveaway announcements videos, but I'll probably add them into another video. Yeah, I'm excited though. And we're going to have some good giveaways and some things give back to you guys this holiday season, because you know what, that is what it is all about. Also, I'm going to have some good videos coming out soon. I'm going to be doing a video again with the Kathleen Lights Dream Street palette and the lip products. I'm also going to be doing a video with the Mac and Patrick Star collection. So if you guys are interested to see how those products all work, make sure you guys stay tuned because we've got some good videos coming out soon. I'm going to be doing some holiday makeup tutorials. Shit's going to get real. Let me know what you guys want to see. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up so you can let me know. You guys can let me know what you thought about the palette or if you've tried it or if you have any suggestions for me on color combos to use. The eyeshadow palette will be linked in the description of this video plus all the other products that I use on my face if you guys are interested. So make sure you guys click on the description if you guys want to find out about any info. That is where the shit is. I guess that's it. Well, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. Also make sure to, what? So this is the Kat Von D Saint and Center. The other finishes that you've got in the palette, she called it electrifying. You've got, This to me looks approximately 150. Everyone says these are good. Have you smelled these? They are overpowering, awful. I hate them.
stomach is screaming at me. I don't even know if you guys can hear it. If I can hear it when I'm editing this, I will crank it up so you guys can hear like just what my stomach is doing. And then they are be able, be, be able to use them. The um, Noir shade from Anastasia. Noir, I said that weird. That's how lackluster the black really is. Lackluster is my favorite word when it comes to eyeshadows, if you didn't notice. Why? Why aren't there any other words? Is it an adverb? What is an adverb? Okay, check it out. 